Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video I want to show you three quick sampler tricks that I use all the time for creating custom drum and synth instruments in Logic Pro. Ever since Quick Sampler came out in version 10.5, I've been addicted to it. I've been using it like crazy, and in a lot of situations I, I don't even need to use sampler. Quick Sampler is often enough. So I wanted to show you three methods I use when I sample with Quick Sampler. One for drums, one for like a synth instrument, and one for a bass idea. So let's get right into this. So first, if you're not aware, you do not have to load Quick Sampler on a software instrument um, to start loading in samples. You can actually just drag and drop right on the track header area. For samples, I'm a big fan of using Splice, but you can get your samples and loops anywhere you like. So there's a cool drum kit. I like that snare sound. Uh, and I like sort of like the, the tom and, and the tambourine, but I want a different pattern. Uh, I want to build a different pattern out of this. So I'm just going to drag this right on top of the tracks area, and you'll get two options here to create a new track using Quick Sampler. I'm just going to use the original option here, and you can see it sl automatically slices up the loop. Now, you, it may put you in one shot or classic mode, depending on the type of loop you drag in. And to be honest, I don't need this whole thing. I really just need maybe the first two octaves of it. And you'll see that it splits the loop up into individual slices. And then what you can do is you can play each of these slices on your MIDI controller. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is shorten up this first kick hit here. And then what I'll do is create a step sequencer pattern with this. The thing I love about working this way is it takes all of those slices that you created with using the slicing mode in Quick Sampler and it makes a different lane or a row for each one. So I don't really like that one too much. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Just press uh, Command Delete. So I've reordered the rows and uh, added icons to each one. You can also go through and you can colorize each of the lanes if that sort of helps you figure out where everything is. And now you've effectively converted this loop into a functioning uh, drum instrument. Now, if I feel like my drum beat is sort of lacking, like I think the kick drum is a little weak on that, I can always just add in another drum sample or another drum loop. Here's just a single drum sample. I'll drag this in to quick sampler, and I'll just keep this a one shot as is. I'll fade out the end just a little bit, create a new pattern sequence. What this will do is just give you one row, and now I've reinforced the kick on that drum loop. So this upper pattern up here is essentially what I call a topper. It's like a, a drum loop that has just high frequency content. Next, I'll show you how to drag in a loop and create your own custom melodic or synth instrument. Could be chords as well. Here's a, a cool plucked loop that I like. I just listen in for the tone and the texture of the loop and see if that's something that I can impart on my own sound design and sort of create my own custom instrument out of this. So I'm not specifically listening for the exact pitches. I'm not listening uh, for the exact rhythm. I'm gonna transform all of that with Quick Sampler and Step Sequencer. So I'm just gonna drag this in, drag it on to Quick Sampler here. And uh, it's just three loops of the same thing. So I'll just kind of pull this real far in here, zoom in quite a bit. I'll just do something like that. And then I'll put this in slice mode, and you'll see that it's sliced it up into six different slices. So we've got uh, two plucky notes, a soft note. I'm going to pull that forward a bit. I'll pull this in forward as well. There we go. And let me zoom real close in here, and let's straighten this out. Let's pull that back a bit. And now I've got six, well, really seven slices if you, if you include the very first one. 
So let's turn that into a custom sound. And part of the control of this is gonna be right here in the volume envelope. If I want this to be more, like more soft, I can pull back the attack in the volume envelope. And I could also roll in the filter, use a low pass filter and roll out some of the high end, maybe add a little drive. Then what I'll do is uh, add a little reverb to this. One reverb I absolutely love, and I've said this a million times on the channel, is Valhalla Shimmer. So next what I'll do is create a pattern region out of this. And then just by playing around with the sound design and the ADSR in the instrument, you can sort of design your own custom sound using a few of these sounds that you like. Okay, so the last thing that's missing is bass. So let's create another quick sampler, custom quick sampler instrument using some sort of a bass loop. All right, this one's cool. It's sort of a pulsing sound. The difficulty here is keeping the uh, pulsing sound in key. Now, because it's sort of more rhythmic, it's gonna try to uh, set this up in slice mode. We're gonna use classic mode instead. And you'll see the root key here says C3, so that means Whatever the key of that loop, when I play C3, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to hear the note C3. It just means you're going to hear the original key of that loop. And sometimes loops will tell you what key they're in, and sometimes they won't. Sometimes you'll have to play around with them to sort of work out uh, the key. You can see the synth loop there from the previous example tells us that it's in G minor. So we kind of know what key we can work, uh, we need to work within. Now the tricky thing here using this pulsing loop is that if you play higher or lower, not only is it going to pitch up or pitch down, it's also going to play faster or slower. And you also want this to pulse at the same tempo as your project. Right now my project is 90 BPM, but the loop was 100 BPM. So one of the amazing things about Quick Sampler is you can actually turn on flex within Quick Sampler and you can make it follow the tempo of your project. And if I maybe want to go a little faster, like maybe 128. And the other great thing about this is when you turn on flex, if I play higher or lower, that pulsing sound will be consistent. I'm just going to pull the attack time forward just a hair, just to get rid of that click at the front end. We might be stuck with it. There we go. So we've got a sort of a cool bass idea here. If you want the, want the pulsing sound to go half speed or double speed, you can choose that here as well. Maybe half speed. So you can do that as well. I'm just put it on one and let's see if I can figure out uh, what chords I need to play or what bass uh, line I need to play to fit the, uh, the melodic idea. Cool. So let me just quantize that get rid of my overlaps. And uh, let me add a little drive to this as well. Let's see what that bass sounds like with that drive on it. Cool. 
And there you go. I created this entire beat here using nothing but loops, but at no point did I just use a loop as is. I mean, kind of with the bass, but I've still time stretched it and changed the pitch of it uh, to conform to my beat. So try these three things out in your own compositions. It's a really helpful way to take something that's a loop or a sample created by someone else and morph it and change it into something that's more original and more you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.